uh, going to a worship service. Okay. I'm going to get with you later, Miss White. I'm going to. Okay. Right. All right. Thanks for your presence and your comments and your participation. And I, I enjoyed every moment of it. Okay. Got, had a lot of it. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm glad you did. Okay. Just be careful and be safe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I I will serve him till I die. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I was alone and I, I was a sinner too. I heard the voice from heaven saying there is work to do. I took the master's hand. And I joined the Christian band. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I left my friends and kindred bound for the promised land. The grace of God upon me, the Bible in my hand. In distant lands I trod, crying, sinner, come to God. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I will serve him till I die. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Okay. Uh, where is Miss Teresa? Okay. All right. Let us know that for our scripture reading will be coming from Ephesians, the second chapter and verses eight through 10, reading from the King James Version. And it reads as follows. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that is not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good work, which God had before ordained, and we should walk therein. The word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> Shall we pray? Good yes. father. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Dear Father in heaven, as your children, we stand before you and lift our eyes to you. We are poor, needy people, often wretched and tormented. Let your eyes rest upon us. Grant us the help we need. Bless us when we gather in the name of the name of Jesus Christ, that we may be a people who learn to serve you on all the paths we follow. Even if it proves bitterly hard, give us true faith for every moment. May we have joy and confidence that you are with your children and that you remain with them forever until the great time of redemption when we will rejoice with all past generations 
and with all who are living today. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you just made the clock, daughter. We're waiting on you. Yes, yes. You're up, Lucare. You ready, Lucare? Yeah, I'm ready. Give me one second. Oh, okay. Missy in the background. You hear her. Yeah, well, we don't ignore her. We we'll let her do what she do. She's baby. Let her baby talk. Well, you want me to go on and read it while she's getting you, letting you get together? No, I got it. I got it. Okay. Here it is. All right. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into a covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of the church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel to all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattletaling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in the efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feelings and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of our Savior to root to secure without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we'll as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of the covenant and principles of God's word. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're at the point in the service that uh, it's fine for all to call. And before I do that, uh, let me remind everyone about uh, this couple of things. This is our women's, no, our auxiliary meetings convention. Wolverine State uh, Women's Auxiliary starts this evening with the uh, uh, musical uh, at four o'clock this evening. If I go, it won't be in person. And there is be services going on each evening. And then starting um, July the 31st, for well, the Wolverine State Congress of Christian Education will be having a convention. I will be teaching two nights. That's Tuesday and Thursday. I will be teaching uh, rent writing and forming a nonprofit. And uh, that's where I'll be. I haven't made a decision the way I'm gonna cancel Bible class Tuesday night or not. Uh, see, I, I read the schedule, but I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll everybody get a notice of whether it's canceled or going on. Uh, as we're studying out of the book of Proverbs, uh, we'll be doing mission tomorrow morning, I think, I'm sure. And um, then I want to remind everybody about 
uh, youth evangelism at the Carver Camp that will be up at Grass Lake like we was for our uh, picnic. It will be from 9 to 3.30, August the, 18th, the 16th through the 18th, okay? And if from kids from 5 to, I think, 18. And uh, they will be provided food, activities, and learning. And they will have uh, transportation to and from there. And like I said, I forgot, I don't know what's the, they're gonna pick up kids from the east side to go to have two buses and kids that is have registered to go from the west side of Detroit. And- How much is the camp? How much is the registration fee? Nothing. Oh, it's free? Yes, ma'am. The church, remember I told you all before, the church is paying, we are paying our dues into all of this. For you all to take advantage of it. Uh, the only fee that was should have been for each individual was when we went up to the picnic. Well, I paid, made sure the church paid for the picnic of those, of course, we contributed that went and paid for the t shirt. Because we, we, as being a dealer, new young church, we hadn't purchased church t shirts. But we do, I did for those who were going, and then I didn't for those who did not go. Okay? All right. So that came out the budget. But this is free. But if they, if you're going to send your, they have to take, they have to fill out that those registration form, the registration form, and the child consent form. But they're asking if you're going to send your child, have a chaperone or uh, an adult with them. Because sometimes these kids can be hard to handle. There is going to be activities for them to do as well as some study time. Okay? All right. But I do need that form back. What day did I tell you? Uh, I need it back. By the, th by the end of this month. That's giving us a couple more weeks to get it done. So they can add up the count. Because we've already ordered the food for breakfast. Our church is, is trying to get the food for the breakfast for them three days to cover them 100 plus folks, okay? And I should hear back in a week or so whether Gordon Foods is going to donate that, that food because that's what I've done. I asked them to donate enough food for our service 100 people, 75 kids, that's who we're trying to serve, and uh, 25 adults. All right, so they let me know yes or no. And if it's no, we're not going to put that in the universe. We're going to do something different. But nevertheless, that's the registration. There is no fee for that because so the church is already registered uh, for the Carver Camp for the year. Okay, any other questions about that? No? So that's all of the news that I have uh, of course that but it's time for us to talk to the Lord this morning because we have so much to be thankful for I know it's a lot going on but we have we more to be thankful because God has delivered he's answered prayers and I know he's answered prayers and I am a living witness to him answering prayers and so is others and I know what he can do. I know what he has done. And I have the total faith of what he will continue to do. So if there's no special prayer requests. I have one. Can yeah. I get, um, I want to pray for my family, just overall, the one I've created. Okay. And the one that I've already, that I've come from, shall I say. Mm -hmm. And then I want to pray for, um, discernment for the job and um my future that's what i want to pray for hmm. okay and that's it okay okay any other no okay well 
We know he's the answer, prayer, hearing, and answering God. We know that. And uh, one you created there, we all need some prayer. Lord have mercy on us. But we don't still ask him, and we don't know that he is, he will. And I know he's a prayer, hearing, and answering God. But okay, let us just go talk to God about everything. Father God, our Heavenly Father, the Father of all, the God of our salvation. You're the God who created all. You're the God who sustains all. And Father, we humbly come before your throne of grace as we have been given the blood brought right to approach your grace through the shed blood of your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we come with thanksgiving in our heart, praises on our lips and worship on our mind. Father, because whatever troubles we might be going through, your blessings outweigh whatever troubles we are. And Father, we are expansion. And Father, we doing as you ask us to do is to cast all of our cares upon you and that you will take care of it. And Father, we know that you are a God who keeps all of your promises. And whatever you say is, is going to come to pass. And when you told us to bring it to you, you will take care of it. And we are doing so. And Father, we want to lift up LaCare White. And we are, she are asking for praying for the well-being of her family, that they will grow in your grace and your knowledge and be a family that you ordain according to your will and your word, that them be a Christian home for their children as they need to be raised in a Christian home. They need to know that you exist and they need to know that their sin debts is already paid through son, your son, Jesus Christ, who hung on the cross, he suffered and bled and died, providing salvation to all who will accept him as their personal savior. And her family as ours is no exception. Then Father, we ask that you just look down on her job, give her the discernment for her job and her future. Father, speak to her heart and her mind right now that she will know that you are talking to her, that what way did you want her to go? And Lord, lead her to in a life of righteousness, one that manifests the righteousness of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, if you brought that job to her, you will uh, make a way for her to keep that job. That will be less stressful on her and conducive to her raising her young family. Father, we know that you can, and we believe that you will, and we are asking for all these things for her and your son Jesus' name. We know you can. Then, Father, we are just asking for the people to come to Christ and in world peace because his world is in such turmoil, and it's in turmoil because it is filled with sin as sin entered the world through the disobedience of Adam and Eve. But thank God for Jesus, your son, that he took sin out of the world as he died for the sins of the world. Then, Father, we ask you to touch the hearts and minds of men, that they will turn back to you, saying, what must I do to be saved? God, Father, I'm asking that you touch those hearts. Move all of that evilness and wickedness that is uh, resting in the heart that mind men that will seek to harm innocent babies, seek to harm innocent people as they're going about their daily life. Father, they, we just need your a touch from you this morning. We just need to touch from you to touch these hearts, to move that evilness and replace it with a heart of love, heart of care, heart of kindness and compassion. And Father, we have so many that still hospitalized. We ask you to touch those in the hospital this evening, this morning, forgive me, and those who are out of the hospital and have made their way home. And Father, I just want to lift up two names. Uh, Mr. Vern White thought it's nobody but you that had healed him and Brother Anthony Webb. Father, these were two sick men that I know for my own self. I just how sick they were, but for your 
grace, your love, and your mercy. You answered prayers when prayer warriors came on board and praying for their healing. Father, we just thank you. And you answered in a mighty way. You answered in a quickness. And Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And Father, there's so many others that are listed here on our sick list. They have illness of one kind or the other. But Father, you are the balm and gilling, and you're still healing. And Father, we just ask you to touch them physically, mentally, and spiritually, because we need all of your touch this morning. And Father, for those who have suffered losses of bereavement and suffered losses of discomfort for some other reason, Father, we ask for a comfort and touch this morning. Father, we ask him for your touch because there's deliverance in your touch. There is comfort in your touch. There's protection in your touch. We just need a touch from you this morning. And Father, we ask you to just breathe on this church and other churches that is open in your name, Father, that they will come and worship and worship you in spirit and truth and invite your spirit in to be in the midst that we, everyone who is in attendance, however they are, wherever they are, will leave with a, a renewed mind and a rededication to live and work for you and saying, for God I live and for God I die. Father, cause your son died for us. And as an expression of gratitude, we're willing to give all that we have standing firm on the truth of your word, that you are our savior and you've done what you've done for us out of love. And we will do all that we do out of love and saying thank you for being my redeemer and you will lay it. And Father, we just thank you in advance for hearing and answering this prayer. Father, and I ask you that I prepare to Bring the message you want me to share this morning. Just speak through me. It's in your name, for Chun's name, I pray. Amen and amen. Okay. The message he gave me this for this morning. To be a hearer and a doer of the word. And I'm coming out of James, the book of James in the New Testament. And... Chapter 1 and verses 22 through 25. And let me just encourage everybody. Get you a Bible. And bring your Bible to church. Every home should have a Bible. And every one in the household should be read the Bible. There should be one, if there's children in the household, a children's Bible that they can start early, beginning to read the Bible. And uh, so God's word will start to seep in to the crevices of their minds and in their spirit. Okay, reading from James 1, verses 22 through 25, reads it follows. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For it, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholden to his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh unto the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deeds, the word of God for the people of God. Today, this message is designed to encourage all of us believers to not only be just a hearer of God's word, but to be a doer of God's word. And doing so, our faith will be known by our works. And as we read in our, our scripture, devotional, we are saved by God's grace to be his workmanship, meaning that we're not saved just to sit on a bench or do nothing. So I have, I have religion, but what do the world know? Do you, the world know you have it by your good works? That's how the world will know. 
I want to point out some things, some facts of why it is necessary for all believers to be a doer of the word as well and not just a hearer of the word. And being a doer of the word, we are letting our light shine for Christ so that the world will see the righteousness of Christ in us. And I'll say again, that's how the world will know who we are and whose we are by the works that we, the good works that we do. And I have to clarify that because so many folks are doing evil works till it's, it's, it's unconscionable. Uh, being a doer of the word, I walk and talk is in sync with the word. It's, it's not if I, let me rephrase it. If I, being a doer of the word, I walk and I talk is in sync. They complement each other. If I say I'm a Christian, then my lifestyle and if I'm living a Christian life, those two uh, is in sync. It's showing as well as telling the world that yes, I am a child of God. And if we can repeat this statement, and for God I leave, and for God I die, because nothing is going to separate me from his love, because he did, gave, he manifested his love for me make it personal in such a way that can't nobody else and nothing else match the love that God demonstrated for us. Now, and then when I walk and I talk, it's in sync. The world will know who we are as because the message that we are sending is powerful and it is a message of salvation. Now, being a doer of the word and I walk and I talk is in sync. We are seasoning the word with the good news of the gospel message of salvation. Christ died paying our sin debt, saving us, all who believe, us, uh, redeeming us from lostness and eternal separation from our heavenly father. Listen. Believers, all of us have been commissioned by Christ himself when he left this command that is recorded in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, when it says this to us, go ye therefore and to all nations, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Listen, being a doer of the word is obeying Christ's command to go in all the world, not just some, but all the world. Because Christ said he was not going to return until his word is preached to everybody, every nation, everywhere. Let What we do know is whatever he said, that is going to come to pass. So we know that he's not, even though it looks like we are living in the last days, He's not going to return till the word, his word, his gospel is preached throughout the, the world. And I can tell you this in communicating with some of my fellow Christian brothers uh, in other lands where Christianity have not been preached, it is being preached. And where it has been oppressed, it is being brought to the forefront. And as it is heard, preached, that people is beginning to accept Christ. Those are doers of the word, the ones that is proclaiming the message in those forbidden areas. Hmm. Let me say this, being a doer of the word, and if we can reflect on the early church from its beginning and how those disciples, when they went forth, after being endued with the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost is the birth of the church and the disciples went out into the world proclaiming salvation message through Jesus Christ. They were doers of the word, not only just hearers, 
Because if you study the ministry, the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ and his 12 disciples, it was 12 of them. They went with him. They traveled throughout the Asia Minor uh, for those three years, but they was turning the world upside down with the truth of the message of salvation. Now, I notice I said the truth of salvation, but when he left and left that command, they, in obedience to what he commanded and dedication to hearing and believing, they went forth and the church grew from its humble beginning to where it is now. When you think about just 120 disciples that was in that upper room on the day of Pentecost, and now look at the billions of uh, Christians around the world who have confessed Christ and as living for Christ and is witnessing to others to bring them to Christ. Doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. And if we can look at it from a different perspective and ask about what if, if they had sat out and said, no, the world is against me. I can't do this. Where would we be? Would I have ever heard, ask yourself this question, would I have ever heard about salvation to Jesus Christ? But no, those were, those disciples took God, Christ at his command and obeyed his command and went forth and taught and preached and baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And as that is spreading and it is continue to spread, we have to continue to be doers of the word, not just hearers on. And this takes into our scripture text, verse 22. It tells us and encourages us to be more than just a hearer. Okay. But be doers as well. And, it, and, and, and the word tells us, and we can come to be doers of the word and not just to hear it. It's a preventive measure become, from becoming a self-deceiver. Who is a self-deceiver? A self-deceiver is somebody who thinks he is more than he really is. He or she actually is. Okay. Then this question came to mind. How can a hero only say, yes, I love God and fail to obey his commandment by sharing the gospel message of salvation with our fellow brothers and sisters. How can you? Because if we love God like we say we are, then we have we are compelled to love our fellow man as ourselves. And in doing so, then we must be willing to share the gospel message of salvation with others. Somebody shared it with us. So now that I have it, I'm going to share it with somebody else. So this, this ball keeps rolling. It's the pebble effect. It's part of here and it just, the way it just spreads out and it just keeps rolling. The gospel, the church, Christ's church, not my church, the Christ's church and churches throughout the world, a Christ's church that have been doing are uh, obeying Christ's command, proclaiming the gospel message of salvation, and it is continuing to spread. And the more we become doers, the more dedicated doers of the word, it's going to spread even more so. And let me just bring to you another scripture where it talks about being a doer as well as a hero, and I'll just expound on it. it was Matthew 12, Mark 12, verses 29 through 31, when it talks about we are supposed to love our neighbors, and we demonstrate our love for our neighbors by doing the good that we can for them, as well as sharing the gospel with them. And I want to say this, we do not have to be afraid or have self-doubt about sharing the truth of God's word with others because we have been empowered with the Holy Spirit 
That's the third person. He is the third person in the Godhead that lives in every belief. He will give us that faith, that spirit, that determination, and the know-how to witness to people that we don't even know. If we have a willing heart, God will do the rest. Be doers of the word, not just hearers on. Listen, let me take you back to scripture because I'm, I'm making my case for us being a doer of the word. Verse 23 gives us another reason to be more than just a hearer of the word by saying this. If we be a hearer of the word, and not only, he's likened to a man that is uh, beholden to his natural face. And when we look in the mirror, who do we see looking back at us? It's self. And we, we just told you in this previous verse that we uh, become a deceiver of our own selves, thinking, oh, I got this. I don't have to do anything else. When clearly Christ himself commanded that we be more than just a hearer, a doer by proclaiming the truth to others. And you say, I'm not a preacher. You don't have to be a preacher. All you have to do is tell somebody and have that willing heart of what Christ, your own personal testimony, is a powerful witness for bringing somebody else to Christ. We all know what we have been through. We all know where we were or how we got saved. Somebody told us about Christ. Somebody told us Christ died for your sins. All you have to do is to believe in him and have eternal life. Somebody told us. Do not deny some of our fellow men that message. We all have a, a witnessing testimony. Then, too, we all have a testimony of God had brought us through something brought us from the brink. We have a testimony. Your testimony could be just the thing a person needs to get them to over the hump or get them to the next level. We don't know. God knows. That's why he's sovereign and he's all powerful and he's all known. Listen, let me keep moving on here. Listen. And talking about this man that he looks at himself and not just a not a doer, but just a hearer. Listen, if he is beholden to his, he's disassociating him or herself from God's word from our life. Listen, if he was in Sunday school, we talked about uh, when prayer was taken out of the school. There was a disassociation for the, the students uh, to know about Christ. There were, at one time, Christ was taught in the home, in the schools, and in the church. And if they, we don't want to leave any opportunity for Satan to infiltrate our lives and our kids' lives. Every, we must take advantage of every opportunity available to us to make sure that our children is taught the word of God. It doesn't have to be a long drawn out thing. Just a Bible verse, a scripture every day, one before you eat your meal. That's how I was taught the Bible. I had to learn a Bible, different Bible books every day and say it before my meals. What happened to that principle? Did it get become non-productive? I think not. It's non-productive if it's not being practiced and implemented in every household. And all I'm trying to say is this. Being a doer of the word instead of just a hearer, we have more than enough opportunities to continue to proclaim the truth of God's word. Start in our own household and make sure that our household know about Christ. I'm just saying, and we do not 
want to become. We as believers are saying we are believers, but not practicing what we preach, uh, dissociate ourselves from God's word because Satan is very busy. He's going to seize every opportunity if there is just a little crack and in getting into our minds and our hearts to create doubt that you don't need to listen to God's word and you don't even have to do what he said. That is wrong. So we do, we have to keep our focus by with the renewing of our minds every day. And Romans 12 and 2 tells us that we must transform our life daily by the renewing of our mind through our daily Bible reading and meditating on God's word. It's nothing more beautiful and more productive than starting your day with a scripture verse talking to God or a, and a prayer to no more than say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning from my night's sleep. And at night said, I thank you for taking me through this day. As it is in our society today, we don't know if we're going to make it to the end of the day. Used to be that we could count on confidently of making it to the end of the day. Not so much now. And I'm saying all this to say we are, we are not using our resources, which is our minds and our heart and our Bible, talking to a holy God. And we want to stay connected to him. And let me just say this, and I'll be finished in a minute. Verse 24 bears everything that I have been saying, because it says it, for he that beholdeth himself and goes his way and straightway forget what manner of man he was. Before we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior, we did not have Christ in our life. Yes, we heard it. And many times it, we had to hear it over and over and over again before it penetrated and said, whoops, I need a savior. I need to be the good ground where God's word to see falls on. That's what that is saying. And when we as believers accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we are no longer that old sinful person. We don't want to go back to that. We want to keep moving forward as a new creation in Jesus Christ, one who that is, lives and talks and preach Christ and manifest his righteousness that is bow out in our love for my fellow man, our joy at peace with God, and our patience with our fellow man, and our long suffering and our meekness. We, those are the fruits of the spirit. Check them out, Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Okay. Uh, uh, let me just keep on moving here. Being that we as believers have heard the word of God and accepted it and have this new life, new found life in Christ, we live gives us the joy that put running in our feet that we are willing to go tell somebody. We cannot wait to go tell somebody about this new life that I have, this newfound joy that I have. It calls us to shout it from the mountaintop. Tell everybody who we see. Yes, we are doers of the word, not just hearers. It calls us to do that. But let me say here, one other thing, a couple other things. Being a doer of the word, is a demonstration of our faith in Jesus Christ as an act of obedience to Christ's command to spread the gospel message. <clears throat> Listen, 
when we look at James second chapter in verse 26, that talks about having dead faith as a body without a spirit, which is dead. We became a living soul when God breathed the breath of life into us. If we don't, the spirit man is our true self. If we do not have that, we are a dead person. And if we, and he's saying, he's trying to make a point here that if you have faith and your works, you are a living doer of the word because you're what, because of your faith, you can now act and carry out good works because of your faith. But without any works, our faith is just dead. So we do not want to have dead faith. We want to have a living faith by being a doer of the word of God. And listen, say that, let me say this. Believers, we are that good soul that God's word fell on. And we are, it is, and it is growing in us as we become more and more into Christ, and God's love, his grace, and his knowledge. And I'm going to go back to something I just said. It will put that, have that fire shut up in our bones that we just have to go tell somebody else. We just have to, uh, we just have to be overjoyed. And I was looking for that other word that I can't find, but it just it makes us have us with that bright smile, that brightness of God's glory shining through us. That yes, I just want you to taste the good sweetness of God's grace that I am tasting. So therefore, I'm going to have witness to you to tell you about the God that I serve. Just give him some personal testimonies. So you don't have a testimony until you've been tested. And when he delivers you, you can tell somebody else, this is what I know, and this is what God done for me. And him being a just God, he do for you what he done for me. Being a doer. Listen. Let's, let's just look at this as I get ready to close here. James, I'm still in James 2, 19. He compares dead faith as demons having faith, but their faith leads to destruction. Our living faith leads to salvation because we're not only going to live it, we are talk about it. We're going to hear it, we're going to talk about it, and we're going to do what it is that Christ has asked us to do. Let's just take it for an example. Abraham. His faith was counted to him as righteousness because he believed God. And God told him to listen, I want you to get up and get out of this country. Go to where I'm going to show you. Abraham didn't have a clue. He said, where God goes to, because he didn't tell him. He said, when you get there, I will show you. And let me say this about Abraham. When God told him to sacrifice his son, Isaac, he went on in faith believing that God would provide, and God did. Just before he could kill his son, God provided a ram in the bush, a living faith. And let me give you another example. Peter and John demonstrated their faith and obedience to Christ when they continued to preach the gospel of salvation and risk being imprisoned and they were several times for preaching Christ. They not only heard, but they did. They let their faith say, listen, I have faith more than the size of a mustard seed to believe that Christ will deliver. We know he has the ability. If it's his will, he will deliver. He, it was and he did deliver them out of jail each time they were. Let me say this. Paul and Silas was in prison for their preaching and teaching Christ. They didn't have a pity party. They had a midnight prayer meeting. 
And guess what? God delivered him because he sent an earthquake and it's opened the gates. Peter was in prison too, us uh, later on. Did he have a pity party? No, he laid down with sleep till the angels woke him up. So come on, Peter, it's time to go. All I'm trying to message, I'm trying to get over to you today is this. Don't be just a hearer, but be a doer and let your faith speak for you because your works through you by your faith will be your calling card. That'll be your business card. Let me give you one, a couple of more examples. Rahab demonstrated her faith by doing a good work of saving the spies as she believed that God would be favorable to her and help, and he did. Listen, Philip was not only a hearer, but a doer of the word when he explained the scripture Isaiah to the Ethiopian union, and he in turn baptized him. Philip and many others was doers of the word. Am I saying that we are, there is no doers of the word? Not by an, any stretch of imagination. I'm just trying to reaffirm to us, since we have faith, let our faith and our works speak for us and tell the world who we are. And I have one others and we'll be finished. Old man Noah, to demonstrate his faith, when God told him to build an ark, he wasn't worried about his reputation. He wasn't worried about what the naysayers and the mockers said to him. He just kept building. And when God sent the rain, Guess who was saved? Noah and his family and the animals that God told him to put in the ark. And his naysayers or his markers was lost. So what am I saying? Just be a doer of the word. You have the faith. Not do it. Let do those good works. Listen. We as believers. And being a doer of the word, let our work speak to our faith. Instead of just the hearers, there is so many and so much that we can do to let the world know, yes, I'm a child of God. And no, I'm not ashamed to tell the world the gospel message of salvation. And I prepare to close here. Let me say this. As I encourage you once again, be more than just a hearer of the word. By telling everyone and showing them your faith through your works. Follow Christ's example doing his earthly visit, uh, stay here on earth. Because when he was here, he demonstrated his faith in his father by the work that he did, by helping as many as he could while he was here. Because he came here to fulfill his mission to provide salvation to all who believe in him. And he went to the cross to do just that. And know this, what we do for Christ will last as our good works is not in vain. You might help somebody, but somebody else might return in faith. Don't worry about it. Know this, that God sees all, he hears all, and he's a just God. And he will not let your good works be in vain. Listen, a work of faith shine bright the righteousness of Christ and this sin darkened world. Be a doer of the word, not just a hearer of the word.
Let us close in prayer. Father God, I thank you for your son Jesus, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for our sins. And Father, as we've accepted you as our personal Savior, Father, now give us the spirit, determination, and the fight to go and tell a dying word about a risen Savior. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I open the doors of the church. If you're here and want to join this branch design, if you're present, you can unmute and we will take care of it. If not, you want to send your application, go into uh, theshepherdministries.org membership. Complete the application and we'll take it from there. Once we get it, we are presented to the church and give you your certificate of membership. Yet, there is none, but yet there is many. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. Amen. Okay. This concludes our worship service for this day.